ESPN did future uh, uh, college quarterback power rankings. This is Adam Rittenberg, very good journalist. This could work. And he just he looked at the situation, looked at the returning starter, looked at you know where you've been and and where you're headed, and was ranking who's going to have the absolute best quarterback position in the immediate future. Who do you think is number one on the list? USC, the presumed number one oh, pick Caleb in the Williams, 2024 absolutely. draft. It is Caleb yeah. Williams. But after that, I was surprised how many teams are returning no starters that are ahead of Quinn Ewers and and Arch Manning mm-hmm. in the situation at Texas. Including we go to uh, Ohio State, despite, you know, losing C.J. Stroud. Kyle McCord's the next man up. ESPN's number 31 overall recruit in 2021. Yeah. Okay. Um, Wasn't Ewers and Arch Manning higher than like a number 31 recruit? Uh, Day brought in Devin Brown, ESPN's number 81 recruit. Is this Longhorn hate or or am I just off on, on what to think of Ewers and Manning? You're right in terms of Ewers definitely being a higher recruit. Some have have said Manning, as a player, needs more work, which is why I really do think he's not going to see a lot of playing time this year. Like kind of a uh, Bronny James situation yeah, going on. Yeah, I, I think it had to have been it had to do with kind of the level of competition he was playing with in high school. And I just know the Manning family from people that I've been able to talk with with at Texas. Part of the recruiting process was like, yeah, we're not trying to have him be thrown into game action until we feel like he's ready because there's going to be a ton of scrutiny that comes with it because of his last name, obviously. But this might just be one of those things where Ohio State has just had a track record of having really good quarterback play under Ryan Day in college. Now, that doesn't always translate to the NFL, but Ohio State, when you look at whom they've had with Justin Fields and you go to C.J. Stroud and, I mean, even a Joe Burrow having to transfer out of there, they've been a really good quarterback development program uh, and Kevin McCord's a guy that I think they think is going to come in immediately be productive because he was high school teammates with Marvin Harrison Jr. there uh, in high school so he's their number one player coming back at wide receiver probably going to be a top 10 pick in the upcoming NFL draft a year from now so I think they, they feel like there's already chemistry between those two so it's setting Kyle McCord up for success okay third best future quarterback situation in a college number two Ohio State number one USC number three Another Big 12 school. Oklahoma? Yeah, Dylan Gabriel. Oh, uh, that's got to be because of Jackson Arnold. The Jackson Guyer Arnold, kid. yeah. Jackson Arnold would be in that mix, too, I think. They, yeah. ESPN's top dual threat and number yeah. three overall player. See, that's that's something worthy, I think, of being ranked over. And Gabriel's a nice, nice quarterback. No, yeah. no absolutely. And I think with Jackson Arnold, they're kind of comparing him to like a, 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 a school comparison to Baker Mayfield. It's oh, kind of okay. how, as, as Interesting. How, as how they would compare him to. Yeah, I think he's a little bigger, but Jackson Arnold was fun to watch play at Denton yeah. Geyer, man. Okay, number four on this list, we go to Georgia, and they'll really miss uh, Stetson Bennett. Huh. Uh, and they must replace their talented offensive coordinator as well, T- Todd Munkin. Yeah. Uh, Mike Bobo, who served as the Bulldogs' OC, is is going to take over. It's going to be a uh, Carson Beck entering his fourth year in the program after serving as as Bennett's long term backup. And Brock Vandegrift, ESPN's number six pocket passer, number 37 overall player in the 2021 recruiting class. And then a, a, another kid uh, from from Georgia, uh, Gunnar Stockton. Yeah. Wow. It's a good name, Gunnar Stockton. Yeah. So is Vandegrift. W- okay. This is, I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask a question. I could probably look this up. Beck. Any relation to the Beck that was at BYU? Oh, the BYU, John, John, John Beck. Beck. Arizona uh, Cardinals? John Beck from yeah, I, I, I don't. That's I, actually a good question, and you, he I don't might know if it, be. I think he is. Yeah, I John Beck is. is one of these guys that is like become a quarterback a, guru. Co- yeah, quarterback guru coach. Oh. So his son, he was a he, John Beck played at BYU, and I, I, I don't know if that kid got away from the West Coast and went all the way to Georgia, but he's been there what four years now. Is what, uh, yeah. what we're talking about. Yeah, if you're going to leave the West Coast and, yeah. and, and go that's somewhere to play football, that's amazing that this kid. Spot. That's amazing that this kid hung in there that long, though. Because what Georgia had a run there with uh, JT Daniel. They had all kinds of guys that were rolling through there. Before. Sometimes you got to just got to wait your turn. You just wait in his turn. Uh, I mean, ask Brad Johnson's kid, right? Yeah, Even he got a, an opportunity. So I'm seeing his it, Beck's dad, Chris Beck, was a linebacker for Navy. Okay, so it's a different. This is a maybe different not Beck. a direct relation to John Beck. Okay, okay, number five on the list. They've lost Bryce Young, uh, but Bama. Third-year sophomore Jalen Milrow said to compete with second-year Ty Simpson. It's another Texas kid from Katy. Okay. Uh, and then here you have uh, number six, returning starter J.J. McCarthy, Michigan Wolverines, better mm. than 
uh, the Quinn Ewer situation, they have uh, him and UT at uh, number seven overall. So by- that, the other quarterback that left Michigan, he went to Iowa, right? If I'm uh, the- yes, uh, oh my McNamara? goodness, McNamara, Cade McNamara, Cade McNamara. Yeah, he went, went to, to Iowa, Iowa, where he's yeah. probably just going to stink in that offense that they have over <laughs> there, which is the worst offense I've ever seen live in person at a football game when they took on Ohio State. Literally, oh, Iowa. It's hard to watch Iowa's offense last year with Ferentz's son. That's nepotism at its finest. Kirk Ferentz needs to fire his kid mm. as the offensive if coordinator. He, if there, you want to watch, to if you want to watch Big Ten players have. The Defensive success, throw on some Iowa tape. Oh, that, gosh, it's will, so will, bad. They will fear some things. Yeah, I was out. watching the Michigan left tackle, uh, Hayer or Haynes, Hayes. whatever his name is, and he's pretty good, but he was throwing people around oh. when they were playing Iowa, which was impressive, including Lucas Van Ness, Van Ness. in that game. Hmm. He, he He's a good player. But no, Gavin, I, I don't think maybe J.J. McCarthy, who has some upside and potential, but Alabama and Georgia, this has got to just be because of the name brand. Like, those quarterback situations, in my opinion, and I get Quinn Ewers struggled in the back half of last year, but we've talked about this. I don't think that shoulder was ever right. And you you talk about the upside with Ewers and Manning. Texas should be ahead of both of those programs right now with their quarterback situation. I I think so, too. I just wanted to check with you guys. How about some uh, Big 12 storylines here from the morning news? We're getting you a college football super segment. A little college basketball mixed in as well. There's Segrist as well going to the baseline, and she missed. It's a rare miss. That's a first. Okay. Um, is Texas back is the number one storyline. Texas returns 85% of its offense, they note here. Do you expect this to finally be it? I would say that the, that after everything that Texas went through last year, you know, with Sark, this is a big year for them. It's a big year for I mean, Sark. This is one last of those, year in the Big 12. Yeah, this is one of those years where, you know, the expecta- expectations are always high at Texas. But we're talking about a team that they're they're talking about them running away from the big running away with this Big Twelve championship. So yeah, I, I it's it's important, man. Every time it's you be a want, runaway year. Well, every time you want to like Texas, something happens. Something happens. They then, underperform. And they, they and underachieve. They blow seven, double digit leads. Yeah, they're seven and five. Or they go lose a game at Ames, right. Iowa, or they'll lose to Kansas, and then you know then they're seven and five and playing in the you know the uh, Valero Alamo Bowl. Question number two: Will Texas Tech contend? Gotta yes. like Joey. I think so. I think yeah. Joey McGuire is building a fantastic program there with Texas. That's the, personal the, for me right there. Yeah. yeah you know, my, every, my love for Joey McGuire and what he can do. I, I think he goes out there, he recruits hard. He's going to get the right. It's got a very much of, of a vibe out there like what uh, Gary Patterson was building at TCU, where all of a sudden it's like recruits started showing up. They're really good at evaluating. They're signing guys. You're working the transfer portal, yeah. and you know, I think I think Tech will be in a better situation. And they were good last year. They just had inconsistent quarterback play because the quarterbacks were constantly injured. So if if they end up figuring out the quarterback, and I think Shug's coming back, the former Oregon transfer, and then I think they got a guy Morton as well there. If they can get good quarterback play, I think the Red Raiders will compete in the Big Twelve. Yeah, Shug and Morton. Okay, where's TCU? Is question number three? They return just thirty percent of their offensive yeah. production. That ranks a hundred thirtieth. Of 133 teams in the FBS, can Sonny Dykes pull this off to what extent? They had to change the OC, right? Did, they changed uh, the OC because uh, they lost Lincoln Riley's brother, right? Um, but you get to Clemson, so they picked up uh, they picked up our guy from Arkansas, the Art Bryles' son. Is, That's right, they did. Yeah, yes. so he was at Arkansas, Kendall Bryles. Kendall, and he's done a good job there at Arkansas. Yeah. I, and, and look, Chandler Morris, I'm a little biased here. I got to cover him at, at Highland Park. I think he's a really good quarterback. And they got JoJo Earl, another guy I got to watch at, from Alito that was a, originally committed to LSU, then went to Alabama, and now he's transferring to TCU. They, they, they've got some talent coming back on offense. They're not going to be totally just bare when it comes to starting next year.